It's a story of passion, of will, of women and men. A story of dollars and dreams. It's the story of a library and a century of dedicated people who have believed in the need for free public access to the minds and hearts of the ages through the printed word and today through a wide range of media and programs. It's a tale of people who have served a community and made history. Been here in this town a hundred years and learned a thing or two. In every age, page by page, got a place in my heart for you. Saw me on West Main, a long South Ocean, took time on Lake Avenue. Got a story to tell, remember it well, cause it all came true. Back in time, I built wishes for myself. Back in time, never was alone on the shelf. And there in my tomorrow, there you were, my open book. Read me dreams that I could borrow. And with just one look, you know that I'm back in time. On May 19, 1883, an article by Reverend S. Fielder Palmer appeared in the Patchog Advance, calling for subscriptions to create a free association library. Our thrifty little village of Patchog deserves a public library. The thirst for instruction and amusement through books and periodicals, so manifestly prevalent, is the kind that only authors of genius and an honorable motive can satisfy. On June 12, Patchogue Library Association was created. It elected a board, approved a constitution and bylaws, and made plans for a library. Its first president was Dr. J.J. Craven. On August 7, 1900, Patchogue's own New York State Supreme Court Judge Wilmot M. Smith's decisive argument clinched the vote to create a public library. People, even poor people, do not refrain from smoking and drinking because of high taxes. And I cannot see why they or their children should refrain from reading good books because of a little extra tax. The library changed homes several times in its early years. Overton Shoe Store, Ackerley's Stationery Store, Ackerley's Music Store, The New Lyceum, Cirrhosis Offices, Carnegie Library Building. From 1908 to 1981, when the library moved to its present location on East Main Street. Patchogue Medford Library has had a rich history from the start. It is a story worth telling. sometimes forget to get up. <laughs> <laughs> the 
was given to me by the staff of the library when I retired in 1990. This wonderful chair, and I have to show you something else. Okay, now, this is even, I'm even more sentimental about this. Now, this is a story. Which says, there's a little plaque which says, to Sarah, with love from the staff, December 9th, 1990. And the reason, and this used to be when I, I think I was the assistant director when I did that. I was the only one in the library who was allowed to have a red cart because uh, the carts kept disappearing. People just walked into your office and if they needed a cart, they yanked it out. And if it, mine was the only one that was red, I could always find it quickly. And then when I retired, they gave me my original red cart. And this stands, as you see, next to my desk. I can't live without it. When did you uh, first come to work at the library? Um, I started here in 1983 um, as head of the technical services department. Do you remember what your first impressions were when you came to work that first day? Well, mostly I remember the first impressions I had of the Patchogue Medford Library when I visited in the older building. Um, I was uh, very impressed with the uh, uh, director and the assistant director who I met at that time. Uh, it was Elaine Phipps was the director who was very welcoming and, and obviously very committed to service. And Sarah Courant, the assistant director um, or a head of reference at that time, uh, was, is, was and is still a very dynamic individual, just full of energy. And the library itself was very cozy, kind of the epitome of a library, um, with the feeling that this was a, a wonderful place for the, for the residents of the community. That was the old library on Lake Street. That's right. How has the library changed, Judy, over the years that you've been working here? Um, I believe it's a far more complex institution now than it was before. Um, the staff uh, need to have a lot wider uh, knowledge base because of the variety of materials and services that we provide. Uh, we know we have books as we always did, but we also have DVDs and ebooks and, and videos. And we have a lot of information available on computer. Um, and our staff has to be able to work with all these uh, different type of material formats. Uh, we've expanded the variety of children's programs. Uh, the staff uh, learn about storytelling. They learn about the psychology of children. They work a lot more with parents as part of these programs. Um, the young adults are more understood as a, a special need uh, community of uh, people, and we try to serve their needs as well. Uh, so it's it's a lot. The library is, is becoming more and more of a community institution. Um, people look to us for, for many services that they don't find elsewhere in the community. Um, and we, we want very much to provide all these services, and sometimes it's a bit overwhelming. It's very challenging, but it's very exciting. If you were thinking back over the years, um, would there be maybe two major library events that would stand out in your mind? Well, to me, since I was uh, intimately involved in both of, of these, um, as I had mentioned to you by my technical services and cataloging background, it was, it was a, a great time to me to change over from a card catalog, which I felt very close to, and it was very important to me, to a computerized catalog. Um, and I can, the um, articles that have been written about the change over from cards to computers, um, I felt very personally. 
Um, and I think we've done very well to change over. I think it's been a, a great benefit to us, although it, it was fun to have the, the cards and, and to work with them. And the other major uh, achievement was our um, change from Central Library, which we still are certainly, to something called Central Reference Services, uh, where we've taken over the, um, all the telephone reference service um, to member libraries. Um, in the county, uh, some of it we had shared with the Suffolk Cooperative Library System. And we're working actually much more closely with the Suffolk Cooperative Library System in terms of sharing services and sharing uh, expertise with member library librarians around um, in the county and expanding the services according to the needs of the member libraries. So I feel the central reference service represents a, a new working with the um, SCLS and the member libraries for the benefit of local residents and all the residents in the county. To get back to that card catalog, don't you have just one secreted somewhere around the building for all time's <laughs> sake? Oh, we do. In fact, um, we actually uh, do have some. I'm just trying to think of... Um, we have one, I believe, that's not in use. It's just there to, to kind of look at. And of course, I took, I didn't take a whole catalog at home because I didn't have room for it, but I have a drawer of the old catalog. So in the next hundred years, we can look back at that old card yes. catalog yes. and it'll we be, have could. historical significance. <laughs> that's right. I think that you've been doing a great job with your committee, Barbara, and the um, histories that Mark Rothenberg has been preparing um, with, with the actual presentation so beautifully done by the uh, graphics department and the, to the leadership of Mary Ann Still, I think are just uh, one of the really memorable um, items and, and things that have been done for the centennial. I, I, the village helped us hang the banner that's hanging in the back of the building. And it's so nice to drive up and see that banner when we come yeah. with the Centennial logo, which, again, um, the committee uh, put together. We just have so many creative staff that have contributed to this. And we have, in addition to the banner, we, we have um, bags and t-shirts. We have uh, birthday cakes that were donated by Sweezy's hanging in the library, birthday cake banners. Um, and the tea that's coming is mm -hmm. going to be really fun uh, in our courtyard. And we've worked with on the village with that as well. So that, that's been a, a, a nice part of this, that it's, it's a, a real community effort. In fact, speaking of the community, um, the quilts, the quilts. Uh, were with the um, real input from the community. Uh, many, many people came and helped and, and did squares and, and put them together. Um, and the community and the staff did a really creative job and a beautiful job. Yes, they did.
If you could dream anything for the libraries, uh, what would your, your vision be of the library of tomorrow? Well, I think it's, it's interesting that my vision is kind of a combination of two that you might think opposing um, um, ideas, opposing scenarios, and one is an expansion of services to people in their own homes. Um, as an example, giving them reference service 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and other services also available at home. On the other hand, I would like to see very much to have this um, building uh, expanded uh, with more space and also to have a, a lively branch in the Medford area because, as I had mentioned before, the um, the aspect of the library as, as a community center is actually growing more and more important, uh, even as people depend more and more for services in their own homes. And it would be a, a place that we could have even more children's programs that we have, more young adult and adult programs. And there's all kinds of workshops that people ask for, particularly now at this time, there's computer uh, workshops that mm -hmm. um, we give, and we'd like to expand those as well. And no matter how much computerization we have, we'll continue with our book collections, and people like to come in and, and browse those collections. So I see a place for the Library of the Future being very much a community institution in terms of a building, a large building, and also many services available directly to people in their homes. Well, thank you so much, Judy. I can't wait to see what the next 100 years will bring. Back in time, I built wishes for myself. Back in time, never was alone on the shelf. And there in my tomorrow, there you were, my open book. Read me dreams that I could borrow And with just one look You know that I'm Back in time I'm back in time